Queen Elizabeth Wildlands. It's uh, Father's Day today, June something. And I'm here with my brother Bill. First time paddling this canoe tandem and still trying to figure it out. But we are flying along, no question about that. Going on a two night adventure, Sheldon Lake. We'll be coming up to a 1.4k portage into Sheldon, and we're hoping that there'll be a site available. It's uh, possible that each site will be taken, as I think there's only five on Sheldon Lake, but let's see what happens. All right, welcome to Park Brothers Campsite 2020. Father's Day, Brother Bill. So we found a site here, not far off the uh, put-in on Sheldon Lake. Uh, we're maybe, we're not even halfway down uh, southward on the lake. There's a nice little bay back in here for fishing. We've got really good access here to the water. We're put in, there's a rock down there about three or four feet that'll be perfect for swimming and fishing. There's deep water right off there. Uh, we've got a nice warm south wind that's helping us keep the bugs down a bit. And we've got a good uh, flat tent pad here that uh, we'll set up our sleeping shelter there. And I brought my little Eureka tent, um, my little uh, two-person tent, to set up over on another pad over there, and that'll be our bug shelter. So, yeah, so far no mosquitoes, just flies. But it's all good. All right, and we're going for a swim. Run and jump. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, that feels so good. I know. And it's wow. actually kind of warm. It's warmer than I thought. Yeah. Way warmer than I thought. It's times like this that bring us back to our childhood. We grew up dreaming of being adventurers, of living in an earlier time. In our youthful imaginations, we were frontiersmen. We were explorers. We were free. In all of the years that have passed, those dreams still remain. With this whole lake to ourselves, wet from the afternoon rains, warm beside the fire that is cooking our food, we feel like kids again. It's been raining most of the afternoon. Bill and I went out fishing. Um, 
we didn't have much success. We had moderate success at best, but no lake trout, which is what we're going for. But we saw a thunderstorm moving in, so we decided to book it back to camp and set up, uh, get things a little more arranged. We uh, sat in the tent for the first part of the rain, and then uh, once it slowed down, we got out and we set up the tarp, and we were able to sit under there for the rest of the afternoon and just kind of hang out. And now it's turned just absolutely glassy calm. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. Who knew that today we would set a record? We have gone fishing together many times and we've caught some memorable big ones, but never have we ever experienced catching a significant number of fish in a single day until now. They just kept on coming, one right after another. Most of them were small, but every one of them bit on top water which is the most fun way to catch fish. Oh, yeah. That's better? Yeah. Is it better? It's not that big. Okay, I'm bringing it to you. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Good Look fish. at that. That's maybe the guy that, that could have been. you lost. That's a little better, folks. That's more what we came here to catch was good bucket mouse like that. He hit the uh, Chug and Spook Jr., Head and Chug and Spook Jr. And as soon as he hit, I knew it was just the better, a better quality fish than we've been catching so far today. It's still not a giant by any means, but definitely the biggest we've caught today. That was a lot of fun. It's been a very relaxing afternoon. We never ended up getting the thunderstorm that I thought we would get. But uh, we figure so far today we've caught 48 fish. And, if, you know, they're not big ones at all, but numbers are really fine, especially on top water. So we came back to camp and we had steak for supper. It's about 6.30 or so now, and the lake is turning into glassy calm again. So we're going to go out and make our loop here and fish some weed beds with top water and see if we can't get some more fish. Cool. Nice fish, man. Thank you. Good job. That was fun. What happened with that fish? I just plopped it in over there by that tree. And he came right out and grabbed it. I, I remember just the lure landed and all of a sudden just smack. And he traveled. Yeah. This is my 
PB of the day. <laughs> Good job, man. That's fun. Good job, man, on the Whopper Plopper. Right on. That's awesome, man. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good one, dude. Holy smokes. Bill's on fire now. <laughs> Only shoot. Only shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Family video. You gotta be kidding me. I didn't even hear that one. It was so quiet. It, and again, it just sucked it right down. Yeah, right on. So far tonight, the Whopper Plopper 90 is out fishing the spook. There's only one Whopper Plopper. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill's using it. <laughs> no! <laughs> they are definitely liking the Whopper Plopper. Pete's too nice to ask for it, and I'm I know. too selfish to give He's it up. He's too me. selfish to give it up. <laughs> oh, another good one. Yeah. Good job, Bill. Way to go. All right. B -b -b bang on. Skeeters are bad, eh? Oh, the skeeters are horrible tonight. But look at that sunset, folks. It's just beautiful. So Bill and I caught how many? 72. 72 bass today. It was a refreshing break from the all the small ones we were getting to get some sizable ones that you saw. And yeah, Bill doesn't get to fish very much, so it was a pleasure, as always, to fish with Bill. No, they let me out to fish. They let Bill out of the asylum to fish. It's unreal. But it's been an amazing time. Mm, all these toys. With all our toys. Good morning. It is our last morning of this part of the trip. I hope to continue on for part two of this adventure um, on Fishog Lake on the south end of Queen Elizabeth Wildlands. Uh, we had a good sleep last night after our really fun day of fishing yesterday. Um, and they're calling for thunderstorms today, severe thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. So that might change my plans with how I'm going to get into the next part of the trip. But we'll see what happens. But we are packing up and then... Yeah, we'll get out of here. I'm gonna throw the waterproof case on just because if it starts pouring, the camera's protected. Are you ready there, Rand? I'm ready. All right, let's go. And so we were on our way home, back through the 1.4 kilometer portage and back over the washed out bridge. I got a soaker, Larry. Oh yeah, near the end. Other than this little obstacle, this portage is okay. Time really does fly by. Before we knew it, we were back at the launch and the trip was over. Parting ways, we each knew what the trip meant to each other. How wonderful it is that now, as grown men, we are able to chase and live the dreams of our youth. Looking at the world with a childlike wonder fuels the passion that we share to plan the next big adventure. Say, Bill? Put a bobber on that bad boy right there. Put a bobber on that bad boy. Man, that way you know when the fish strikes. Because you got a bobber and you can see it go under. You could just sit back and let the bobber do the work. <laughs> the bobber catch the damn fish for you. Oh man. Sometimes bobber catch the fish for you. <laughs> we don't have that damn bobber anywhere near us. <laughs> we have no bobber. Break. <laughs> Excuse me. Nancy and the kids to the Finger Lakes this weekend. Sunday, what's the date today? July, I don't know. June. Oh, July. Fairly hot today. Fairly hot today.
going there this weekend. <laughs> yeah, we're going there this weekend, Saturday night, you know. Saturday night. But, boy, I tell you, Rand, you know, we had a great time, and I can't wait to leave here and go straight to Applebee's. <laughs> Are you going to be joining the beer league this summer? I'd like to join a softball league this summer, Rand. What about you? So, you know, I would, if, as long as I got enough time, you know, a dance with the kids, you know. Yeah. Pretty busy. It's know, pretty summertime. busy, you know, and I work 9 to 5 every day. School's out. You I know, work 9 to 5. A job, but, I mean, she's pretty busy with those kids. You know, when you play softball on the weekends, you know, and it's tough when your kids have got to go to all their sports and that, you know. Oh, they, they, they run into the same scheduling. It's true. We have a lot of schedule overlap. We almost have to get two Grand Caravans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>